our dear viewers and listeners. We greet you in the wonderful and precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. This is the day the Lord has made. And we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to today's Bible study from Dominion Church International. Dominion Church. And before we begin today's session, let's dedicate this moment to God in prayer. Precious Lord, we, we thank you for your grace, for your love, for your mercy for the Holy Spirit. There is no one like you. There is no God like you. There is no Father like you. We yield to your voice today. We yield to your direction today. Have your way in us today. Reach out to everyone out there listening. Cause them to hear these words of life. For you say in your word that the time will come when the dead will hear the voice of God. And they that hear that voice will live. We thank you because life proceeds from this broadcast to reach out to the world. And for that we are grateful. The glory, the honor, the power and the praise belongs to you alone. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Today's text, we will be taking it from the book of Revelation. Chapter 13 From verse 11 To verse 18 The Bible says Then I saw another beast Coming up out of the earth He had two horns Like a lamb And spoke like a dragon and he exercises all the authority of the first beast in his presence and causes the earth and those who dwell in it to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. He performs great signs so that he even makes fire come down from the earth from heaven on the earth in the sight of men and he deceives those who dwell on the earth by those signs which he was granted to do in the sight of the beast Telling those who dwell on the earth to make an image to the beast who was wounded by the sword and lived. He was granted power to give breath to the image of the beast. And that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast to be killed. He causes all both small and great rich and poor free and slave to receive the mark on their right hand or on their forehead and that no one shall buy or sell except one who has the mark or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him who has understanding calculate the number of the beast. For it is the number of a man. His number is 666. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Today we continue on this journey of unmasking the beast. Last time round, 
we looked at the beast who came up out of the sea. And it was a great sight when you read it from the from the Bible, from the book of uh, Revelation chapter 13. The sight of an image that has ten horns and has ten crowns is something that is beyond any human imagination. Something that looks like a bear, that looks like a lion. It's a sight to behold. And we saw that this beast that arose, whom we identified as the Antichrist, was given authority. He was given power and he was given the throne by the dragon. The dragon was the beast that we identified as standing on the seashore. Looking out to the sea. And we identify the seas as the many nations that are gentile in nature. And from here will arise the Antichrist. In Revelation chapter 6, we see this Antichrist arise. He comes as the rider on the white horse. With a bow but without any arrows. His conquest is unlike all the conquests we have seen throughout the life history of Israel. Because all the conquest all the way from Egypt to Rome all the conquests were bloody. His conquest will be bloodless. He will use deceit to be able to ascend to power. And once he is identified, he will be empowered by the dragon to cause men to worship him. And when men worship him, they will be worshiping him. And they will also be worshiping the dragon that gave him power. So in essence, the objective of the devil which is to establish a kingdom on earth that will usurp the kingdom of God will be in ascendancy at this time. Jesus in Matthew 22, 24, talks about this time as the time of the Gentiles. So it is the time when the Gentiles will be in ascendance. And I told you that we are going to see how this whole establishment will come in place. We have seen the first sign, which is the sign of the dragon, who is Satan himself. We now see the first beast, the one who arises from the sea, who is the Antichrist. Now from this text, John sees another beast arising this time from the earth. And this plus the one that arises from the sea. Plus the dragon 
Gata kono gusota. Form an unholy trinity. Katibate kawoka tonda mugusa tunaye obobu tali mutuvu. That mimics the trinity that we have of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Ngabageza koku chupula katonda mugusa tukwetumba nyinga katonda chitafe no mwana no moyomtu. Why is this important? Because he wants to establish something without reinventing the wheel. He wants to use a formula that has already been established. So like God the Father sent God the Son to act on his behalf. We now see the dragon giving his throne to the best out of the sea. He gives him his authority to execute all tasks on his behalf. Like the son, Jesus, executed all tasks on behalf of the Father. Then now we see the third person the third sign, the third beast, arising. The Bible says, in the beginning, it says, then arose, then I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth. That word another is the Greek word alos. Which means another of the same kind. I, I'll give you an example. Imagine you had a pen. Like a Parker pen. Okay? And then you used it. And decided to go back. No sala what day you to where you bought it, you would tell them, I want another pen, but of this kind. So they will give you a packer pen, but they will not have given you the one you have re you got before. So you will have two pens. This one and the one that you have just got. But this looks like the other. Why? Because it is of the same kind. Back to the text. The beast that he sees rising, he says it is another beast. And he brings in the understanding that it is one like the previous kind that we have seen. So in terms of viciousness, in terms of nature and character, the two beasts are not any different. In terms of agenda, they are not any different. What will change here now is the objective and the responsibility of what this is to execute. The Bible tells us that he came out of the earth and had two horns like a lamb. And here is a point for us to know it. When you saw this beast, you saw a lamb. And once you see a lamb, it is a symbol of meekness. It looked gentle. It had horns, which meant it was a ram. Now, looking at it, the picture of it was something docile. Gentle. It will not cause any harm. And how often 
we get deceived by the looks. But the Bible tells us when he opened his mouth, what came out of his mouth, he spoke like the dragon. So the words that come out of his mouth then take us all the way back to Genesis chapter 3 where we see the deception of man that brought to his downfall. When this lamb spoke, what came out of his mouth was deceit. That points to the devil whom Jesus labels in John chapter 8 and verse 44 as the father of all liars. So he will use deception to be able to ascend to that place of preeminence. John says, I saw the beast ascend, arise. So this won't be abrupt. This will be a very calculated move. That we take advantage of the circumstances that prevail within that time. And when you look at what is happening right now, there is so much that is pointing us to this time. That is setting the stage, preparing the hearts of people for the arise of the third beast, of the second beast. Why is this important? Because he arises as a solution to the turmoil, to the confusion to the wreckage that he himself has caused. You see, the thief cometh not but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. That is what Jesus gives as the description of the one who will come that is not him. Now, that's important. Because when he does this, he creates all the chaos. And then this creates the platform where he now comes up as the solution to the problem he has created. So then men begin to look to him as the solution. So he comes in the person of a lamb. But John describes that this lamb had two horns. And this pictures Christ in so many ways. Because it points to two faces. First of all, the, the horns refer to power. Strength. So in whatever this is being executed, this will be done in power and authority. And here we draw that in, in spite of the fact that you see these horns, they point to the power to function. And he functions in two offices. Number one, as a priest. Number two, as a prophet. And this is represented by the two horns. You see, just like Jesus Christ is a priest who leads all men and women 
nga yekabona akulembera abantu bonna all over the world mu nsizo to na. worship the father okusinza this individual kati omuntu ono naye is a priest na yekabona leading the world kati ya akulembera to worship the first beast okusinza ensole ya soka just like jesus nga yesu and the prophets before him performed miracles. This individual, the Bible tells us, in verse 13 to 15, that he will perform miracles. He will perform the miracles that will astound the men on the earth. So don't let the miracles be the only thing you are looking at to believe that this one is sent from God. Jesus put it this way. He said, you shall know them by their fruit. There needs to be evidence of the fruit of the Holy Spirit. So he comes proclaiming a message that is different. It is an economic message. It is a message of economic salvation. It is a message that will get people to take the mark in order to be able to rationalize the resources that will be available at that time. He has caused the scarcity in order to bring about rationalization. Then he goes behind to get the people to receive the mark so that they are able to access what he has caused to be scarce. And in getting this mark, they are getting to worship, to look to the beast, the second beast, the first beast for supply. Why is that? Because now we see, like the Holy Spirit, Jesus tells us that whatever he got, he glorifies Christ. John chapter 16 verse 14. In the same way, this false prophet glorifies the Antichrist. Revelation chapter 13 verse 12 and verse 14. So here we see the parallels. Like the father gave his authority to the son. Philippians chapter 2 verse 9 to 11. We see the Antichrist who is the first beast. Receiving authority from the dragon That's in verse 3 and then we see the false prophet glorifying the beast with the antichrist like the same way the holy spirit glorifies christ see how it all comes to in place. And the Bible goes on to tell us something that is very is that is very important. When you look at the nature of the signs that are performed, verse 13 tells us that he does great wonders so that he makes fire to come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. And he deceives all those who dwell upon the earth. Everything that he's doing, the Bible says he does it 
in the presence of the beast who has healed. Bible yetu gamba ati avikolera mu maso bwensoro eyawone yaine chiwundu newona. Now the the phrase in the presence of simply means on behalf of. So the objective, like I said the last time, is to get the following. The objective is to drive all to bring about a reference of the beast and of the dragon. The objective is to get people to worship the beast and by worshiping the beast they will be worshiping the dragon. That is how it paints out. That's how everything works out. So how does he go about this? He creates an image of the dragon. Sorry, an image of the beast. And when he creates the image of the beast, he breathes life. And this image becomes life. To the extent that it can speak. To the extent that it can command death. Upon anyone that will come against it. Upon anyone that will try to unmask it. Such is the ferociousness. He came as a lamb. He has now made a beast. Kati atonze ogusoro. He has made an image of the beast. Atadde wechi fana nyecho ogusoro. To drive men to worship the image. Okusikiriza abantu okusinza echi fana. And when men worship the image. Ila abantu wabasinza echi fana nyecho. They are actually worshiping the beast. Amazima dala basinza ensoro yenyini. And when they worship the beast. Ila yabasinza ensoro. They are getting to worship the dragon. Awa basinza no ogusota. Now, some of this technology is almost here. Kati technology yono asinga wali. We are at a time when you read about the disruptive technologies around that cause you to even shiver when you think about it. Ngo laba technology yono alese nchuka chuka, ngo lusa kule tero kwe uunya kubiola. The other day I was reading about Disneyland. Ulina bade nsoma mchifeche Disneyland. And people have managed to bring up an image that looks like Abraham Lincoln. And people go there to actually talk to him. And it is just an image. He looks like him. But the other one died a long time. Now if that can happen in this day and age, then he tells you this is not far-fetched. When the Bible was putting this down, it, it looked like this cannot is inconceivable. It looked like a fairy tale. Yesterday I was watching the news. And people in France were protesting. Because for you to visit a store to buy anything from there, you had to show a certificate that you have been vaccinated for COVID-19. I kept thinking, I'm like, wait a minute. So this is not so far-fetched. It will actually happen. And at that point, the Bible says, He will persuade all humanity to receive the mark of the beast on their forearm and their forehead. 
and um, it's the time that we're in. I had a friend from the Scandinavian countries last month send me a clip. He is from Sweden. And he was telling me, wait a minute, here in the Scandinavian countries, people have chosen to have a chip on the inside of their bodies. So if they have been caught by the police, you don't have to look for your driving license. All that information is on the chip. Which chip is in your body? So if you need to access your financial accounts, you don't have to carry an ATM to be able to access and draw funds over a machine. This information is with you. So if you're walking into a premises where you work, you don't have to have an access card to access the building. This information is already on the chip. So if you are going to a doctor, they don't have to search your medical records. This information is already with you. So the library of your life is with you. Any information that anybody needs about you is with you. And so I asked him, why would we go to such length? And he said, it is convenient. Life becomes convenient. You see, under the guise of convenience, we are stretching the limits. And I believe this sets the platform so that when the Antichrist shows up and the prophet shows up, they have a smooth going with regard to whatever they have to implement. Why? Because it will be convenient. Now, convenience is okay. We all love things that are convenient. But we need to be aware. We need to be on the lookout. Because behind all this is an enforcer. Behind all this is a schemer. Behind all this is an agenda. And this agenda is not for your good. This agenda is to bring destruction to humanity. Remember the Bible tells us. And we saw it in the chapter that we are looking at. After the devil has been cast out in chapter 12, he realizes that he has a very short time. So he has got to make use of every opportunity that is available to draw men to worship. So to you, my brother and my sister, to you out there who is watching us today, we need to look at the times that we are living in. We need to look at the conveniences of life that are being availed to us. And ask ourselves the question, what is the purpose? to all this. Because if we take it at face value, we will consume everything that comes our way. 
Ujia kusembeza bulichimu chiogu wako. And before we know it, you know, we'll get ourselves trapped. You see, the beast, the first and second beast, have something in common. They don't come forth as warriors. They come as peacemakers. And along the way, they then change. They promised peace. See war. They promised hope. But we see destruction. They promised the unity. And what do we see? We see division. The second point I want to make is what this false prophet will represent or will come with as the hope. He will come at this point as one who is uniting of faith. He will come as the one who brings uniformity to all faith. And it will be at a time when he before the one he represents has brought all the confusion that we have. Of the so many faiths that rise up with the hope that all of them make it to God anyway. So he comes to us. He comes to the people at that time with the message that it is one God. And all roads lead to one God. That this, we are all pointing to the same thing. And this is a message that will appear to the times that we live in. We see a lot of ecumenism movements rising up. So you may say, Pastor, you mean you are against unity? I'm not against unity. What I am against is uniformity. See, we cannot have a uniformity. Getting everything to be uniform. Bundle them up. When the object of faith is different. You see, the object of our faith is Jesus Christ. And that should not be lost. He alone is the way, the truth, and the life. And no one can come to the Father except through Him. So any other way will lead you to this father. But you will meet him as a judge. You will not meet him as a father. He will not embrace you and wash away your sin and give you a place as an heir with Christ. You will not get to have that freedom have your past done away with. Given a hope and a future in Christ Jesus. You will not have the opportunity to be referred to as the child of the Most High God. There is only one way. There is only one object of faith. Only one mediator between men and God. And he is the man, Jesus Christ. You see, I may sound like a broken record. Because I am repeating this over and over and over. But truth be told, we may end up believing a different Christ. 
Ngatuesa ze tukiriza Kristo mulala. We may end up believing in a bloodless cross. Ngatukiriza mu musala boguta yoguta ogwata afirwa ku. We may end up with a powerless gospel. Ngatuine njiri taina manyi. Why? Why? Because we choose deliberately. Vanga twa salawo to go for what is convenient. Today it is shocking that many of the preachers that we have will talk about the love of God but come short of talking about the danger of sin and why this love of God then manifests itself and how this wrath of God will come upon the sinful. The fact is the father that we serve and has set us free is a God of love. But he is also a God of justice. And that justice was seen at the cross. And unless we come to the point where we understand and realize that you and I are sinners without Christ. And it is only and only through the death of Jesus Christ that we have eternal life. Without that death there is no life. Because this is what happened. The one without sin became sin. The one who did not deserve to die had to die so that we become inheritors of eternal life. So you cannot have life without death. That is so plain. We cannot deliberately stay in sin and hope for eternal life. You get that life now and you have to leave behind as a result of this life you hold on to the new life and let go of the old life that is associated with the old man that is a news so wonderful Back to the text that we read. The Bible says Bible concerning the prophet that he had power to give life to the image. Look at this. When God created man, what did he do? The Bible says Bible he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living being. Now we see a situation where someone, an individual, is given power to give life not eternal life. It, it is this life on earth to make it living. Why? Because he wants the attention of those who dwell on earth. Not 
not those who dwell in heaven. Last week we saw those who dwell in heaven. Whose names are written in the book of life. Those who dwell on earth are those whose names are not in the book of life. So when they see this feet, because their attention is focused on everything that is going on, are not above because their lives are not hid in Christ in God. Everything about them is about today. Now, their life is secured in materialism. Their life is secured in humanism. And because of that, there is this swept away. And the Bible goes on to tell us that he will cause all both small and great rich and poor free and born to receive the mark. This may appear voluntary. It may appear convenient. But he will cause to receive that mark. And because they are so materialistically oriented, he will then point to the materialism, the ability to sell and buy, which is basically commercialism. So it all points to what you're getting now and throws away what Jesus asks. What will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? Yes, you will have the ability to sell and buy. Yes, you will be prominent. Yes, you will have a sense of freedom. But your soul will have been sold out forever. So you ask, Pastor, how do you escape this? This is how to escape it. The answer is Jesus Christ. Yes, so Christo Today, if you would hear his voice, harden not your heart. Today, you can surrender your life to Jesus. That is the only escape. That is the only way. Because then your life will be focused on what is above. And not on what is below. Your life will be hid in Christ. In God. Your life will be secure and sealed by the Holy Spirit. So today I'm going to give you an opportunity to surrender your life to Jesus Christ. To bring all your sins. Come as you are. To you the burdened. He says, Come unto me. And I will give you rest. Come to Jesus. Place your life with him. He will save you. You believe with your heart and are given righteousness. You confess with your mouth and you receive salvation. So why don't you pray with me? Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I am a sinner. I need a Savior in my life. I have wandered 
I have strayed. But Lord, today, I have heard your cry. I have heard your word. Here I am, Lord. Save me. Wash me. Cleanse me. Purify my heart. Separate me, Lord, from every evil and demonic influence upon Wash my name. So why write my name? In your book of life. Lord. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Save me. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now, for you who have said this prayer. From the bottom of your you have been wonderfully saved. Take the next step. Call that number you will see on the screen. Tell us of your salvation experience. Tell us what God is doing in your life. Who will pray with you? Who will encourage you? Who will uphold you? and ensure that this journey is a fruitful one for you. Now for you who is struggling, for you who is tormented, the Bible tells us that God has anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and and he went about doing good. Healing all those that, that were oppressed of the devil. Because God was with him. This Jesus, the Bible tells us, Bible is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So, even now, where you are right now, now he can come into that situation and turn your money into dancing. He can come into your midnight situation and cause a daylight to spring forth. Why don't we agree together in prayer concerning that situation? Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you praise and we thank you. With you all things are possible. You who does exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask of believe. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, we stand in agreement concerning that brother, concerning that sister, concerning that one that is watching or is listening to us today, with regard to the situation that they are faced with, Lord, for those that are struggling with her, your word declares that by the stripes of Jesus we were healed. Therefore we take authority over every sickness. We take authority over every disease. We speak to every cancer. We speak to every tumor. We speak to every blindness. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God, we command that health to be restored in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God. Be healed from your head to the soles of your feet. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God. Be set free right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God. King of kings and Lord of glory. We give you praise and we thank you. 
Because sicknesses are living. We thank you, Lord of glory. Because chains of bondage are being broken off your people. We thank you, Lord of glory. Because your people are being set free in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Somebody with a migraine that is being healed right now in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Oh, thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus Christ, there is that pain that is leaving your stomach now. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, be set free in Jesus' name. Lord, I give you praise, Lord, I thank you. For in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, be set free in Jesus' name. Lord, I give you praise, Lord, I thank you. King of glory, be magnified and exalted. I give you praise, I give you honor. I give you glory. For somebody who has lost their business, I hear a voice speaking about restoration. Restoration in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I thank you for that restoration. In the name of Jesus Christ, the years the canker worm has taken, the years the hoping locust has taken, be restored to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Weber. Thank you, King of Glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 For somebody with a testimony, there is that number to call. Please call. Tell us what God has done. And let's celebrate his goodness. So till next week. From Dominion Church International. The saying, Shalom. God bless you. Amen. Amen.